One of the most daunting things that you can come across when you're new to selling on eBay is customer questions. They're going to ask you things that leave you perplexed as to what to say and how to say it. One of the most important things that you need to do when you're running a business is to be professional. And sometimes you're going to get questions that make you feel, well, unprofessional. I've spent a lot of time answering questions from people that will ask me, what should I say in this situation or what should I say in that situation? So what I've done is I've literally gone through and created a list of potential questions that are fairly common and a potential response that Melody and I actually use something very similar to it that helps us remain professional while conducting our business. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you something I think that will be really, really helpful if you're needing help with how to give a professional response to some of these questions. And so hang around till the end of the video because I think that, that it will really help some of you. So what I've done is I have broken down the types of questions that we get into four, four main categories. And they are inquiries prior to the sale. And that's going to be everything from size to condition and those kind of things. Two, shipping and handling questions. Three, requests for discounts. And four, complaints and issues. Keep in mind as we go through these, there isn't anybody that can tell you, here's exactly what you say in every situation because it just doesn't work that way. What I want to give you is an insight into the types of things that we say that have been professional, they've helped us protect our feedback, and while still providing very professional service. It also helps if you have a prepared response for those times when you get something that's a little bit emotional to have a professional response to fall back on. So let's talk about what some of those kind of things are. One of the ones that you're going to get is somebody asking about the size when you already have it in the listing. And so what I've got is this right here. Good morning. Thank you for looking at the listing. We have included that information in such and such a place. All you want to do when you are answering a question about size, when it's clearly in your listing, is professionally as you possibly can, point to where it's at in the listing, what they should be looking for. And that's it. And then thank them for looking. You will see a lot of redundancy in my responses. They're going to start out very similar and they're going to end very similar. And it, it just keeps me on track with the beginning and end of the conversation for the customer. You're also going to get questions about sizing when it's not in the listing, but you're able to provide it. Um, I had somebody ask me a question one time and they were like, hey, what is the neck hole on the t-shirt? Not something that I had included in the ad, but I certainly, as somebody with too big a head, I certainly didn't mind looking for them and giving them that measurement. This response helps you do that, and then you send them the information that they need. And that's not the only type. Sometimes you're going to get a question about size that truly isn't applicable to the listing. For example, Melody and I sell a lot of vintage clothes. Some of the clothes that we sell, they're genuinely meant to be displayed. They're not in the kind of condition that can be worn. And this response that I've got on the screen, this is the type of response that we would send in that situation. So keep in mind as we go through these, this isn't all the questions you're going to get. There are a ton of questions that it's not possible for me to predict or cover. But hopefully when you see all of these, you're able to take these and make them fit your situation. Just like sizing, you're going to get questions about the condition. And sometimes you've clearly said exactly what is in there. We're listing a sweater right now, and it looks like a 1980s Frogger sweater. Like super cool, but it's 100% wool, and it will have some repairs on it. We have very, very clear pictures of the repairs, but it would not surprise me at all if somebody sent me a question and said, does it have any repaired holes in it? In that, just like the sizing, I'm going to point them right back to the place where I've talked about that. Sometimes you're going to get questions about the condition. And again, just like in sizing, it's a collectible. The condition is as pictured. And I use this definition right here. I use this response 
for those types of questions. And I point them back to the fact that this isn't meant to be worn. This is a collectible. Let's move on to the second category. And don't forget, I'm going to give you something at the end of this that is going to make this so much easier if you're trying to keep track of all of this. But let's move on to shipping and handling. One of the most common questions you're going to get is, can you combine shipping? And that question is going to come to you a bunch of different ways. If you do not require immediate payment, this response will help you get started with responding to the customer. And pretty much it's going to tell them, hey, when you pick out everything you want, I will send you an invoice with the combined shipping and you can pay from that. If, like me, you require immediate payment, you may end up in a situation where they are purchasing it and you're going to combine it and you will have to refund the difference. But that's not the only kind of situation that you're going to end up with when you're combining shipping. Sometimes when you take first class items and you combine them to ship, they're no longer under a pound and now they're going to go priority mail. And we use a response like this right here for that situation. I'm going to combine shipping for you, but I'm not going to be able to save you any money, but I'll get it to you faster. And, and that's an appropriate response in that situation. And we've included one for what if I can't combine shipping? You know, if I'm selling a bowling ball and a fairy light, I don't want to put those in the same box. So sometimes it doesn't make sense or it doesn't save anything at all. And it might even ship slower if you combine them or it changes the size too much. So we use a response like this one for that situation. Another very, very common question you're going to get a request for discounts. Whether or not you have best offer turned on, people are going to ask for money off. They're going to either, they're going to send you a question, they're going to send you a note, they're going to send you best offers with explanations about why it needs to be cheaper for you. So let's talk a little bit about how to respond to those professionally depending upon the circumstances. If you have best offer turned on and they send you an, a message, like an email, asking for a discount, but they haven't gone through the proper button, I use this statement right here, and I direct them back to the listing. There's a reason that eBay limits the number of, of uh, requests that they can make for a best offer. They've limited it to five. I don't want to give them 20 by letting them negotiate without the system. Let's say you got an item on sale or you will get a best offer and it's absolutely ridiculous to the point that you're not even interested in sending a counter offer. You're going to decline it. When I'm going to do that, I use a statement like this right here. I send them this note along with the decline that, you know, <laughs> bottom lines were too far apart but I, I phrase it professionally. You're also going to get the question where you're too far apart, but everything seems like it's somebody you would do business with. It's just, you're going to counter offer. And in that situation, I'll use a statement. Or I'll use a message like this one right here and I'll send that to them and let them know that right now, this is where I'm at. And this is as low as I'm going to go right now. And a lot of times people will buy from that one. The worst request for a discount ever, can you guess? It's when you get a request for a discount after they bought the item. They already either agreed to a best offer or they sent you a best offer or they bought it outright. And then they're like, oh, hey, can you do it for this much? And I'm like, you already bought it. It's perfectly fine to write unprofessional responses in your head. It's much better when you click send if you put in a professional response. And I have this one prepared for that situation. And it's nice for me to have it prepared because I'm not caught off guard and, and don't tell them everything I think. But this one keeps me on track, keeps me professional. But no, we don't do that. We don't negotiate after you've already bought it. All right. So let's move on to four complaints and issues. And very, very soon, as soon as I wrap this one up, I'm going to tell you what I've got for you that's going to make all of this a little bit easier. Complaints and issues. It's almost impossible for me to cover all the ground that complaints and issues can cover. So I've tried to pick out some of the big ones. So let's talk about some of the, some of the ones that I've had recently enough for me to remember to include them in this. One of them is a customer sends you a note and says, hey, my item 
was damaged during shipping. And I, as the seller, I included insurance in that. So let's say that I knew it was breakable, I packed it really well, but I went ahead and I have insurance for it. I'll use a statement like this right here that explains to the customer what I'm doing. Usually with an insurance claim, I'm gonna need something back from the buyer so that I can take care of it. It is not the buyer's responsibility. In my opinion, it is not the buyer's responsibility to take care of that process. I sold it to them. It needs to get there in good condition. So I, but I will need pictures and I'm going to need some things from them. And, and I normally ask them to hang on to it in case I'm asked for other pictures. But regardless of what happens with the carrier, if the carrier isn't going to cover it, I'm going to take care of it. There are times when you didn't have insurance, a lot of, you know, first class doesn't include insurance. And if I sent it first class and it was obviously damaged and it's something that I need to take care of, I'm just going to take care of it. And if it, uh, if unless the customer is giving me really sketchy vibes, like I, like they're trying to get a discount or they're trying to get it free. But if it seems like a regular customer, they leave regular feedback and it's just a regular deal and it got damaged. I'm going to refund it and I'm going to take care of it as fast as I can to keep them happy. It isn't the message that I would use if it was obvious that the customer was just fishing for a partial refund. You know, a lot of times that'll come with, well, I can't really send you pictures of it. My phone doesn't work. If you're getting those kind of vibes from a customer, what I do on then is I send them this note right here. And basically it says, I'm going to give you a full refund send that thing back to me and you're going to find out one of two things they'll either damage it and send it back to you but they didn't get to keep it or you will never hear from them again by far the most common response to hey i am going to take care of it 100 percent refund for you for sending it back that's not what they wanted they just wanted it free or they wanted a discount after they got it the vast majority of the time, I never hear from those people again. The, the side benefit of being professional when you talk to customers and offering refunds when you can is that when, if there is a complaint, if they file a complaint or if they give you negative feedback, for me, eBay has always been very responsive when I've been very professional. Let's take a look at a couple of other complaints and issues that might come up. Perhaps the most common complaint that I get or issue is that whatever the item was didn't fit. If I accept returns, I just direct them back to the regular return system that eBay has put in place. I think that's really important that you go through that. Sizing isn't just limited to clothes. I recently got a return on a Raggedy Ann and Ra Raggedy Andy doll because it did not fit their swing. And despite the fact that I had measurements in it and everything was there, they returned it because it didn't fit the swing that they had for the Raggedy Ann and Andy. And normally, I'm just going to take care of it. I'm going to resell it. It's just part of my business. Returns are a very, very small thing that I deal with. There are some other complaints that you're going to get that go back to the shipping and handling, but it's more of a complaint. At some point, you're going to get a message from a buyer that says, my item did not arrive. They may go directly to you or they may have filed the complaint uh, or, the, or the request through eBay that says item did not get here. First thing you need to do is look at the tracking. And I always check when is it supposed to get there? If it's not supposed to get there for two or three more days, this is the kind of note that I would send them. You know, I'm still recognizing that it isn't there when they wanted it, but it wasn't due yet. And if it doesn't arrive by that last date, please let me know. That's what I do if the tracking shows that it's not there, but it wasn't supposed to be there yet. Eventually, you're going to get one that says, my item has not arrived. I want my money back. But when you check tracking, it'll show the item as delivered. And this is the message I send to those people. Here's the deal about eBay. If they file a request, through eBay and says my item did not arrive, but it is marked as delivered by the carrier, eBay is going to cover you. You're going to get that little message from it that says, hey, the buyer has made this claim, and then I upload the tracking. Once I upload the tracking and it shows as delivered, they're going to close that. 
and they're going to cite in on my behalf. My email, my message back to them tells them how to handle it. For an item to be marked delivered, that means your local carrier had it in their hand. Obviously, these aren't the only questions you're going to get. There's a whole lot more than that. I, I've covered them kind of quick. I really didn't want you trying to write them down because what I'm going to include is in my description, I'm going to give you a, a link to the document that I typed up to do this video. You can download the document. It's on Google Docs and you can edit yours and do whatever you want with it. I've created it for you. Hopefully, that helps you remain professional when you're getting a lot of these requests and you weren't sure exactly how to handle it. I've got a lot of exciting things coming up in the next couple of weeks. I hope you stick around for some of those. I appreciate you being here, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.